Right. Our next speaker is Mark Rubin, who will tell us about locality and the deutsch heiden quantum field theory. No laser pointer. So thank you very much. Um, and yes, I will be talking about locality and the uh, deutsch heiden quantum field theory. The goal of this is to be able to do explicitly local calculations of supposedly non-local quantum phenomena. That is, is the aim of this whole program of work. I will start out uh, by very briefly mentioning the facts about the non-locality of uh, Copenhagen quantum theory, and then move on to how it is that Everett opens up the possibility of having locality. To realize this possibility, we will include quantum field theory, uh, the deutsch heiden representation, and something I call effective locality. And then I'll give you some examples of uh, deutsch heiden quantum field theories. So Copenhagen quantum theory does not provide any local mechanism to explain correlations between distant measurements, the classic example, of course, being uh, correlations of spin measurements in, in the einstein podolsky rosen bohm scenario. Uh, and Bell's theorem tells us uh, that there is no local mechanism that will explain these correlations, except that uh, Everett uh, doesn't allow us to derive uh, Bell's theorem, because an implicit assumption in deriving that theorem is that there is a single outcome to each measurement, uh, and so uh, this theorem can't be proved in the context of Everett quantum theory. Um, so we've removed this obstacle to having a local explanation for EPRB and similar types of, of correlations, but now the question is, does one exist, and if so, what is it? Uh, before moving on, I should say that, uh, and this is important, that Everett does more than simply remove the issue of uh, Bell's theorem as a problem for locality. Uh, the Everettian uh, framework uh, provides a, Everettian theory, I should say, provides a local framework for explaining these kinds of correlations. So, can we get the mouse? Oh, there we go. So at some initial time, uh, Alice starts out in, in some relatively localized position, which is, oops, which is far away from where Bob is, and also very far away from where uh, the, particle, the particle pair that they'll be measuring is. As time goes on, moving upward in this diagram, Alice encounters one of the particles, makes a measurement along her favorite axis, and subsequent to that, uh, there's an Everett copy of Alice who saw spin up and another one of Alice who saw spin down. Uh, Bob undergoes a similar uh, fate, and when the Alices and Bobs get together in the middle, uh, let's suppose Corey is waiting for them in her ready state to make a measurement on both of them, and depending what type of measurement she makes, there will be two or more uh, Everett copies of Corey's uh, state of awareness. Uh, so, for example, if she's being funded to studies of the clauser horn form of uh, Bell's theorem, she might just determine whether or not Alice and Bob have both uh, found spin-up. The point is that we'd like a local mathematical formalism that instantiates this framework. Uh, and when you hear the words local mathematical formalism, the first words that should come into your mind are field theory. In fact, we can, we can start by posing a question in a Heisenberg picture uh, quantum field theory, how could that not be local? Uh, at each point in space, uh, there are operators that evolve uh, via local partial differential equations. Uh, what could go wrong? And of course, the answer is that in the quantum field theory, to extract physical information, we need more than the field operators. We also need the state vector. And uh, the state vector carries information about conditions throughout space, uh, which are imparted into it 
uh, via the wave functions accompanying the creation operators that are used to build up the state vector from the vacuum. So now we have uh, a second impediment, in this case an impediment to this argument that if I have a formalism where every ingredient in it is local, then it's local. Uh, and to overcome, better? Okay. And to overcome uh, this impediment, or attempt to, we are going to be going to the deutsch hayden representation. Okay. To transform to the deutsch hayden representation, we have to find a unitary transformation that maps the state vector to some standard va state vector, which we can choose, but of course a natural one in field theory is the vacuum state, uh, which contains no physical information. And in this kind of representation, uh, all the information resides in the operators. Where else could it be? We've removed it from the state vector. So uh, Everett has removed the issue of Bell's theorem. Uh, Deutsch and Hayden have uh, demoted the role of, of the state vector. Uh, so is this enough? Can we now say, oh, Heisenberg picture quantum field theory must be local because there exists a representation in which all its ingredients are local? No. Uh, the, we have to verify that the deutsch hayden transformation itself is local. Uh, and a really local transformation would be one in which a deutsch hayden transformed field operator at a given point only depended on information living at that point. Uh, this turns out to be hard to do, uh, possibly impossible, I don't have a proof of that, but uh, it's easy to see why that is uh, difficult, because in order to have a unitary that maps the state vector to the vacuum, that unitary has to know everything about the state vector, and therefore contain all the information in these wave functions that were at all these places throughout space. And uh, so there, there's a danger that that's going to be imparted to a field operator at any point, no matter where it is. And so it seems, uh, once again, we may be at an impasse, uh, but we have to step back and realize that this uh, criterion that I wrote down on the first line of a completely local deutsch hayden transformation is more stringent than we need to accomplish our goal, which is to have a local model of the generation of these EPRB correlations. Uh, a local model being one in which the observers and the particles only obtain information about each other uh, via very explicit transfers of that information through space. After the initial time, the fact that we're using local equations of motion will ensure that. So we just have to make sure that at the initial time, uh, the observers and the particles don't start out with non-local information coming from this deutsch hayden transformation we've done. So it's enough to have what I'll call an effectively local deutsch hayden transformation, one where a field operator at a certain place only depends on information, quote, uh, quote unquote, close to that place, close being defined relative to the separation between the, um, the observers and the particles. So if a field operator at some location uh, near where Alice is located, uh, picks up some information from Alice's wave function. We don't mind that. Similarly with Bob or the particles. Uh, what we don't want is a deutsch hayden transformation in which a field operator uh, at a place close to where Alice is now depends on the wave function for Bob and, and so forth and so on. That would introduce non-locality. So let's look at some examples. Uh, all of these will be non-relativistic. They will all be, oh, <coughs> pardon me, they will all be fermionic. Uh, all of the fields uh, will be anti-commuting. Uh, in all these cases, we'll take that information-free deutsch hayden state to be the vacuum state. And in addition to the, uh, the theories having operators corresponding to Alice, Bob, the particles, and so forth, the, the physical entities in the theories, we'll also have these auxiliary fields. What are they? Well, they're fermionic again. Uh, their wave functions are normalized, but aside from that, totally arbitrary. 
uh, in the usual representation, that is to say, before we apply the Deutsch-Hayden transformation, they only appear in the state vector, not in the Hamiltonian, not in any other operators corresponding to any measurement. So any physical predictions will be independent of the values of those wave functions. And in fact, physical, physical predictions would be unchanged if we removed the wave functions and the auxiliary operators. Why do we have them in there? It's because with those auxiliary fields in there, we can have effectively local Deutsch-Hayden transformations. So example on a single particle, uh, here's a state vector. Uh, it has uh, the crea a creation operator for the, the physical particle, for the auxiliary field, and associated wave functions. And we can write down what the Deutsch-Hayden transformation is that will map that state vector to the vacuum. And having an explicit form for that, um, we can apply that to the field operator and obtain the Deutsch-Hayden transformed operator uh, in the field operator in the Deutsch-Hayden representation. In fact, we can come up with a closed form version of that. So let's take a, a look at this um, and with an eye towards seeing where information in that uh, psi, the, uh, the wave function of, of the particle, where that ends up in term, in, inside of any of the field operators. And we're going to focus on situations where the particle is well localized at some position because that's what, that's what will correspond to what we'll be doing in looking at the EPRB situation. And we can see that if x is some position which is near the location of the particle, then the field operator at that point will essentially be un uninfluenced by uh, the wave function because it's died away far away from the central location. And even if we're at uh, that location, uh, the, con the effect of the wave function on the field operator will only come from pieces of the wave function close to where the particle is localized in that second term. We don't care about stuff coming from the auxiliary field uh, wave function. So, in fact, we do have an effectively local Deutsch-Hayden transformation. Again, could this be done without the auxiliary field? Uh, not that I've been able to see. So now, uh, for the full EPRB scenario, uh, we'll apply similar considerations to Deutsch to doing a Deutsch-Hayden transformation uh, on the state that we start out with. It'll be, of course, more complicated. And then we will use the Heisenberg picture equations of motion to evolve those forward in time and uh, determine what the correlations are after this uh, ex experiment outlined in the framework has actually gone through. Uh, so let me, I'll just say words about those. Uh, you can see the paper, the details of the calculations. But uh, we have uh, so th three fields for each of the observers. Uh, the particles are taken to be distinguishable, so two more fields. Uh, each one of those is a two-component spinner. Uh, the observers also have two components, uh, a ready st state and a, oh, I detected something state. Uh, everything starts out in uh, narrow Gaussian wave packets with uh, complex phases to direct them in the direction they're supposed to be going. So Alice meets up with her particle, and eventually Alice, the Alice's and the Bob's meet up with Corey, and so forth. Measurement interactions are instantaneous, uh, hence technically non-local, but very short range, so we preserve the effective locality. Uh, that and the fact that uh, we've put the initial states in narrow wave packets and make sure the masses are large enough so they remain uh, localized during the time of the experiment. We can use a sudden approximation to do the computations and we can model Alice and Bob doing ideal measurements on their particles. Uh, when it comes to Cori, uh, we have to throw in some perturbation theory and I'll say a few words on the next slide about how that impacts the result. Uh, but we have to say how do we how do we find out what we're getting out of this? And uh, we can use the, num the expectation value of the field theoretic number density because we only have one quantum for each field here. 
Uh, so that maps directly onto the probability density, and it gives us a very good notion of where things are because we have narrow wave packets and, and they're on essentially well-defined trajectories. Um, and uh, in fact, we do end up doing an effectively local calculation of EPRB correlations. We have an explicit mapping, more complicated than the last one I showed, but an explicit mapping from the initial state, including the entangled particles, to the vacuum. Uh, we verified that the transformations of all the operators are effectively local, and we use the um, Eisenberg picture time evolution along with uh, sudden approximation and various other tools of, of field theory. The uh, Everett copies of Alice and Bob and Corey appear where this framework says they should. So after the interaction with the particle, there's a 50% probability along that world line of Alice who saw up and Alice who saw down. Uh, the actual, I should say, the actual calculations, by the way, are done in the usual, um, in the usual representation. That's just simpler. Uh, at the next calculation that I, sh the next model I show you, actually, will have all the calculations uh, done in the uh, in the Deutsch-Hayden representation. I mentioned that to actually get the the number out of uh, the, the expectation values of Corey's states, we have to use perturbation theory. And the reason that's somewhat unfortunate is that although the probabilities that Corey has for uh, measuring both uh, Alice and Bob having detected spin up uh, are of the form that will, can lead to a violation of the closer horn form of Bell's inequalities in terms of their dependence on the, um, on the angles that Alice and Bob choose to measure their particles at, the, res the value she get is not she gets is not actually something that violates the Bell inequality because it's just it's too small. It's almost, it's almost as if there had been some large detector inefficiency, but the form is, is there. So separability. This is another feature that it is often claimed that uh, quantum theory doesn't possess. Um, Howard defines it as spatially separated systems being characterized by separate real states of affairs. And uh, Tim Maudlin says, if you fix the states of the parts in a separable system, you fix the states of the whole. The whole is just the sum of the parts. So let's look at that notion in the context of a, a different model. This one has a single field and a, a three quanta excitation, because I was interested in seeing how this formalism went through in the case of identical particles. Again, spin a half fermions, we localize them each in separate regions. Uh, start out with an unentangled state and verify that the deutsch hayden transformation for that one is effectively local. Uh, and then, <coughs> pardon me, then do a transformation on that system which entangles two of the spins. And so we can, and we end up with an explicit uh, expression for each of the uh, field operators, both spin up and spin down, uh, in the deutsch hayden representation for this entangled system. Okay. So as I said, uh, all of everything here is now in the uh, deutsch hayden representation for this entangled system. So uh, these, are, these are essentially number density operators, uh, as in the, the previous case. Local, Operators that measure localized spin, so the integrals over each of the regions of bilinear in the field operators in that region. And uh, over there on the second bullet, you can, if we, and if I had, by the way, if I hadn't told you I was working in the Deutsch Hayden representation, you might guess that from the fact that all of these expectation values are being taken in a vacuum state. So the expectation value of the spin in, in one of those regions is, is given by taking the bracket of that uh, spin operator. If we want to go over to the right side, we can look at uh, correlations between spins in two different regions. Um, and this is separable. Uh, fixing the states of the parts, uh, that is the, the spin operators, which themselves are functions of the Deutsch-Hayden 
field operators, which live in which are live in well-defined spatial locations, uh, you fix the states of those, and you, you fix the states of the whole because those calculations on the right side, uh, the vacuum state contributes no information. Uh, the Deutsch Hayden operators themselves are the separate real states of affairs. So uh, we're happy with that. Uh, not as happy as we could be because in getting the explicit Deutsch Hayden transformation, Deutsch Hayden operators uh, for the entangled state, it was necessary to do a global, non local transformation. And so, this, the rep, what's going on here actually is separable, but technically not local. That's not because of any fundamental tension between the two ideas, it's just that it was technically simpler to do that here. And in fact, uh, there are methodologies within quantum field theory of both relativistic and uh, non-relativistic of uh, generating an entanglement locally. I did one myself, and so I hope in the near future to incorporate that into here and then have something which is both explicitly manifestly separable as well as local as the previous one was. So uh, yeah, here's where we are and where we're going. Uh, using the deutsch hayden representation, we can create effectively local and separable mathematical models of entangled systems in non-relativistic fermionic quantum field theory. As I said, the next step is to include local interaction to get the uh, entanglement in the model that explicitly demonstrates the separability. Uh, beyond that, uh, clearly there are other particles than uh, fermions in the world, namely bosons, and it's important to be able to do this and for those kinds of particles also. And with those in hand, clearly the place to go would be to uh, relativistic fields. Special relativity is, is the strongest reason we have for, for not believing in non-locality. And uh, besides down here, well below the Planck scale, relativistic quantum field theory just seems to be the way the world works. So uh, I'm greatly thankful to uh, Jen Bin Mao, Jake Rubin, and Al Tino for many helpful discussions on this. Uh, to Lev and, and to the workshop organizers and, uh, and, and to the staff, uh, this has been just, and I think everyone would agree, just an amazing and, and uh, inspiring conference. And I'm, I'm just so, the talks have been fantastic and it's, it's just, I don't know, I don't know enough to say about it. It's been, it's been phenomenal. And of course, thanks to all of you for listening. Questions? Thank you. wondering how this goes over in, in a relativistic case. So, I mean, it, it, it's natural, I guess, that you take the vacuum state again to be the reference state, because the relativistic vacuum is quite entangled. Mm -hmm. Wondering, either technically or conceptually, whether that creates issues. Well, so that, that's going, that is going to be one of the issues that will have to be looked at there. Uh, but, yeah, in, in Heisenberg picture, which this is, one tends to find that one can replace entanglement in a state with locally inaccessible information, if you will, in operators. Now, how that will go through, I, I would only be speculating at, at this point. Sure, yeah, I'm not concerned about the, the conceptual idea we can do entanglement. I'm, I'm more interested that on the technical layer level in the normal sort of qubit models, and I think also in this model, because the, the reference state is a product state of the individual operators, you get a certain kind of simplification. Whereas that, that's going to be difficult to do in the relativistic case, because you know, the, any, any finite energy state is, in, in the normal sense of the word, entangled. Um, this is, like I say, this, this is a, 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 a warning of an issue that I think will come up and might, might complicate things. I, did, I don't see a reason it should block the proposal, but you, you mm. might be. Yeah, it. no, I, 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 I agree, and that's... Uh... Yeah, there, there, was work to, there was work to be done. Definitely. Thank you, Mark. A uh, uh, very small question, but it's most likely just about uh, words. You mentioned that there were separability, but not non-locality. Uh, I was sort of puzzled by that. I thought that what I qualified to be 
local and complete was sort of fulfilling the criterion of separability that some other people sort of have, but could you comment on it? Oh, sure. So I was, so here I, I you know, illustrated an example of a system des described separably, uh, but these, these operators, the S's and the field operators they depend on, those, those came about in a non-local fashion. Uh, in the, the, too bad I don't have the pointer here, but in the upper equation, uh, we have a, okay, the top button. Okay, that's good, not good. Uh, all right, anyway, so yeah, here, this, so this is, this is the non-entangled operator, Deutsch-Hayden transformed, effectively local. This one, uh, to get from here to here, and I, I don't write out all the details, but I used a, an explicitly non-local transformation. That's why, very, a very simple reason. Okay, cool. And, and yeah, that's, that, that should be something like, wait a minute, it's uh, separable but non-local, but this was because I wanted to focus on how the, what, what an operator representing an entangled state looked like in Deutsch Hayden and to, to get the uh, result of the non-separability. So I, was, I decided let's just go ahead this way, but clearly one wants to go back and generate the, generate this guy in a local manner. And uh, yeah, if you will, it's a promissory note, but I. Good question. <laughs> 